All right. Good morning. Good morning. We got a nice group of people already showing up first thing in the morning, waiting for the morning bell. How are you guys doing today? We got a good class. We had a fantastic class last night. Boy, I'm telling you, we had a fantastic class last night at the university. We did. We did. It was a great time. Everyone had a great time. We taught those guys. We filled them with a fire hose. We taught them so much stuff. It was amazing. We had a great class. I think they learned a lot. I know it was a lot to learn, but I think they learned a lot. Uh, the question is, how much of it will they remember? <laughs> I know that this stuff that we're learning here on these options sometimes feels a little overwhelming, but don't let it feel overwhelming. You just have to get exposed to it. Once you're exposed to it, you know, it just starts becoming second nature and you start talking about it as if it's something you know about. And then after a little while, it's kind of like my mom, you know, when she tells a joke, she laughs when she hears it. She laughs when she tells it. And then she finally laughs when she figures it out. So <laughs> it's kind of, that's the way, you, you know, that's the way options are. Options are kind of a thing that you, you uh, think you got them figured out when you hear about them. You think you got them figured out when you, when you trade them and then, you know, a year later, you kind of figure out what you're actually doing. So that's kind of how options are. I know, I know options are a little crazy, but you know, they're fun. Hey, they're a great way to trade and fun way to do things. And so, you know what, when it all comes down to it, it's just one great big video game. And it's just another tool in your arsenal to go out and, you know, kill the dragon. So let's go kill the dragon with some options today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to just going to this is the stock market that we're looking at right now. I'm looking at the queues. And yesterday, the Fed spoke, and they didn't raise interest rates. And they didn't lower them either. They didn't do anything. They just sat on their hands. And actually, the market liked that. They thought that was pretty cool. And so the market ran like a banshee yesterday. If we go over and take a look at our futures version of the software, we can see these are our indexes. So this is the futures version out of the out of New York, uh, excuse me, out of Chicago. They are off of the New York exchanges, though. So this is the S&P 500. This is the Dow up in the upper right-hand corner. Bottom lower corner, right corner is the NASDAQ 100. Bottom left-hand corner, that's the Russell 2000. And we, you know what? We've been watching the Russell a lot, and it, it, it used to trade a lot better than it does now. Lately, the Russell's not been doing too good, too well. And so we've been uh, kind of been a little bit disappointed with the Russell. It's been a little bit sideways. It's usually been our been our our good trader. You know, I trade the Dow, and everybody's like, "Why are you trading the Russell, man? The Russell's doing so much better." Well, it's not been doing so much better lately. So, kind of waiting for something to happen here and see if we can get some of these markets to run. We had a good time yesterday. For those of you who attended yesterday, um, good old Joe Biden came out. And said that everybody, every um, everybody has to buy electric cars. That's the rule. New rule. <clears throat> when you're president, you get to dictate what everybody has to buy nowadays. I guess in this country. So he said everybody has to buy new cars, and everybody has to buy electric cars. Over fifty percent of all the cars sold, and I'm not sure the date. Can somebody might want to look that up and see when the date when that goes into play? But he's passed a law that says everybody has to buy new cars. And then we have to buy electric cars. And so that's why Ford Motor Company took off yesterday. And we were trading Ford yesterday. Had a good good winning day trading Ford. And I think that was the reason why that market went to the moon. Okay, look at the Dow flush here on the opening bells. The bell rung. Yep, that's the that's the ringing of the bell. Can you hear it? Ring, 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 ring. And the Dow is flushing. The Russell is rallying. This is the S&P. Now, the S&P... We're here on a 15-minute chart. So we're looking at this one on a longer-term time frame. We're doing that because we like to trade options on the S&P. We're going to give the stock market a little bit of a, a few minutes over there. Then we're going to jump over just to give you an idea of what we're doing today. If you look out on the little marquee, the little, the little thumbnail for our YouTube channel, we're going to talk about options, and we're going to talk about selling options. Uh, in class last Monday, we talked about buying options, and we went in and we bought a whole bunch of options. What was it? Monday, yesterday, no, yesterday, one of these days. What's today? Thursday. Well, yesterday, I'm getting the days confused. Anyway, one of the days this week, we went in and we bought a whole bunch of call options over in the stock market, right? Bought a whole bunch of them just to show you how it's done. And uh, market's been rallying. We bought some put options too. 
put options not doing so good, so well, because the market is rallying. Look at the Dow. Look at the Russell. There it goes. Broken above that blue line. What's that blue line, land? That blue line is the magic blue line. All right, that's the magic blue smoke of trading. That baby right there is our VWAP, volume weighted average price. And for some reason, somebody thinks that's important. Lots of people think that's important. And so because they think it's important, they make it important. And so the market has a tendency to use it as an area of support or resistance. It uses it like a rubber band. If it gets too far away from it, it gets scared and has to come back to it. Now, technically speaking, we don't like to see it keep coming back to that stupid blue line. We want to see it go away and away and away and away and stay away from the blue line. But no, that blue line, it's like a magnet and it pulls the market back down to it. So anytime the market gets too far away from that blue line, it likes to come back down and touch it just to say hi. And it does that on occasion. So watch and keep that in mind. Uh, Bruce likes to trade against that. He's like, hey, if it gets too far away from that magic blue line, I'm going to take a position. Watch it come all the way back to the magic blue line. You've been doing pretty good with that trade. All right, let's um, let's see if we can't get something going here. These are all one-minute charts. Should we go, I don't know if we want to go look at the range bar charts or not. Sometimes they get a little bit too fast here in the morning, but we'll go take a look at them anyway just to see. We put NASDAQ at a 25 range. We're going pretty aggressive on these uh, ATRs. Look at where we got the ATR. I think we'll maybe tune that up a little bit. Eight, nine. How about that? Change it for all the charts. Okay, the S&P is falling a little bit here while we got the Dallas rallying. What we look for is we look for a market that's already moving, moving, shaking, starting to rally, and then we see these little white red bars in here. See these little red bars? If you get a green bar after that, that's where you want to buy. Now, the market's starting to slow down a little bit. We're getting lots of little red bars in there. Man, I thought you wanted to go long on the red bars. Well, it's already getting pretty extended up in there. We'll see. Here's another one where the market was just going, 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 going up. Nice, nice, nice. Made a couple little red bars. As soon as it makes that first green bar, that's your buy signal, and away you go. So this is a tiny time frame. This little tiny time frame, this would be scalping. We're not going to stay in the market a long time when, when the market's doing this. Now we're getting up here. On the back side of the of the MACD, see it's starting to roll over the top. So that to me says oh, we're getting up here on the back side of the MACD on the Dow too. I know these charts are kind of small, but you know I can't project a bigger monitor onto YouTube. They don't like it when I make a bigger monitor. I got a bigger monitor over here on this side. Look at me, I'm like in a glowing red today. Am I always glowing red like that? Maybe it's the Microphone. Microphone's got a red red tint to it. Red light on it. Shining on my face, making me red. That's pretty weird. All right. Nobody's looking at me anyway. You're looking at the charts. All right. Let's see if we can't get something going here. Come on, babies. Come on. Rock and roll for us. These are our little ABC patterns, right? ABC land. ABC. ABCD land. ABCD. We got to see if this market's not going to go. Go, go. We got to get it to go. Yesterday, the, the Fed said that they weren't going to raise interest rates. And so the market took off like a shot. Kind of wimping out up here. Means we're probably going to see this thing fall and come back down to the magic blue line, right? Is that what's going to happen? Get a little bit of a move towards the magic blue line. Get a little bit of a pullback. Little green bars in there. I know they're tiny. I know they're tiny. I know they're tiny. Make them tinier? No, make them bigger, man. Make them bigger. Well, then we can't see the can't see the trend. We got to kind of see what's going on here. See where we think that thing's going. It's not going to. It doesn't want to fall very. Like, oh, look at the Nasdaq. It's trying to turn around. Of course, it did that last time, right? So. See how it did that? Came down, made a little pullback, coming down, makes a little pullback. Is it going to make one more drop? Nobody knows. It's a carnival game. You going to start throwing darts? All right, there's where you'd throw your dart if you thought it was going to go. We'll take that one a couple shorts because we're on the micro mini on that one. Okay, but if it doesn't just immediately start going in our favor, we're just going to get right back out because we don't want markets that don't do what we think they're going to do. Because if that goes up there and makes a little trend like that, we expect it to fall. And if it doesn't, 
that means you're going to start losing money and we don't like to lose money. <clears throat> losing money is a bad thing. When it's not falling, it's going to try and go back up. Look, the Dow's going up. Eh, it's not going to fall. We're going to get out. Lost $27. Okay. Well, now it's trying to go up. Are you going to go long with the land? No, let's wait and see if it wants to go up first. Let's see if it wants to go up. If it does, we'll go up on the next red bars. So we'll see this thing turn and go up. Then we'll get a couple of red bars and we'll see if it'll go up again. That's what we like. Oh, it did it on the Dow and we missed it. We were paying, trading the NASDAQ. Right there is our little buy signal. Started to go up, made a little buy signal, going up again, making a little buy signal in here. We could try it. We could try it. We could take it. It just made it, didn't, I got in late, a little bit late to the party, but we'll see if it'll break above that previous high. Come on, baby, rock and roll for me. Three strikes, you're out, land. Oh, it's not going. Three strikes, you're out, land. Put our stop in there. If it comes down and stops that, hits that yellow dot, we're just going to get out again. We got to catch a trend. We got to get it. Oh, look. Oh, man. There goes the NASDAQ. Now you're going to look back at the NASDAQ and say, why didn't you take that, land? Why didn't you take that? Well, because we didn't know for sure if it was going to rally like that. Um, the NASDAQ's rallying. We thought the Dow might do it too. Come on, Dow. Don't be so lazy. All the other markets are shooting to the moon and you're sitting here dilly dallying around. What the heck? There we go. Get some movement in there. Get some movement in there. It ain't going to do much. It's just going to wimp out on us. This trend isn't too good and strong here. Come on. Look at the NASDAQ. Man, That's that thing's blasting off like a rocket ship. Come on, Dow. Don't come back on us already. We're going to take a loss on that damn thing. Piece of crap. There's one on the, there's a little buy. There's a little red to green right there. A little red to green on the Russell. We'll try that one. That stupid Dow's being worthless. Way up there in the upper region. RSI saying, well, if we topped out up there on the RSI, it says, come on, you can push one more higher for me on the Russell. Come on, Russell. No, it says, no, no, Lan. I knew you were going to get in right there on that red to green. Now I ain't going to go higher for you. And that NASDAQ, we're like, oh, whoa, you should have taken that reversal right there, Lan. Well, I didn't think it was going to go to the moon like that. I thought we'd get a little rally, a couple, three, four bar rally and a little pullback, get a little red bar in there. And then we could get a opportunity to get in on that little pullback right there but no it didn't do that maybe it'll do it now come on there we go got a little bit of momentum here on the russell come on russell there you go there we go there you go we're gonna get our money back all right we're gonna get our money back lock in our Lock in our losses with that stop. We'll just put that in there. Oh, look, now the now the Dow decides to go after we get out. You rotten bugger. Okay, we're getting a little pullback on the NASDAQ. What's it going to do? We're going to try and get a second leg up. There we go. There we go. We got some rustle moving for us. We got a little muscle, muscle on the rustle. A little muscle on the rustle. How about that? <laughs> that land's so funny. <laughs> Little muscle on the wrestle. Here we go. Let's bring that up in there. That starting to get how many bars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. We're gonna top out right there. We slide that baby up in there. Ten bars. Gonna come back on us at ten bars. We've got some muscle on the wrestle. There we go. Ten bars and we're done. So that put us up $100. All right. We did a little day trading today. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Let's go say hi to some people. Who's in the Who's in the room? Oh, we got a good group of people watching. We got only a few people saying hi, though. Oh, we'll say hi to who's saying hi. Gary Thomas is great to see you. Bruce R. McConkie. There we go. Bruce R. <laughs> that wasn't very 
funny. <laughs> Kirk Schwartz, good morning, folks. Brian Johnson, great to have you in class. Michael Bruce, well, great to see you, Michael. I love your little icon there. That bull is an awesome bull. Then we got Oliver Rohr, hi from Frankfurt. Great to have the overseas folks. All right. Oh, there we go. Dalton's saying hi. How you doing, Dalton? Dalton Taylor. John David Lundberg. Picking it up in here. Nice to see you guys say hi. There's some more of you out there. I can see you. There's a little icon out there. It tells me how many people are in the room, and you ain't all saying hi yet. So you want to say hi? I'll make you famous. Oliver says hello. What? You lost some money yesterday. Two five two thousand five hundred dollars. What the hell, Oliver? You're supposed to use stop orders and get out. Get out. If it doesn't just go in your favor, just get out. B. Taylor. Good morning, Land and everyone. <laughs> Oliver says I should just use the autopilot. Ah, I can't say that word. I have to go to confession. <laughs> I have to go to confession, YouTube confession, if I say that word. All right. I'm 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 there with you, though, Oliver. I'm right there with you. $2,500. Was that real money or is that in a demo? Hopefully that was in a demo. So, <clears throat> all right. Oliver says you better. Uh-oh. He says that was real money. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, Oliver. You better book a class. You better book a class with me. Lan, how do I book a class with you? Everybody gets a free class with me. Anybody who wants to come and talk to me can talk to me for free at least once. I do have a thing where you can pay for it. <laughs> My time's a little bit valuable. I try not to give it all away for free. But, hey, I'm here to help you guys, and that's what I do. So if you guys here, I'm going to show you how to get a hold of me. Here's my calendar. Here's my calendar. If you guys want to come and chat with me, there's a one free bowl session for everybody. One free bowl session. Now, if you're in my, if you're a university student, that doesn't hold the number one, one free bowl session. You can have two or three lessons with me if you're for each class you register in. So don't, don't feel like you're, if you're at the university, I'm a, I'm a teacher at the university and I have my office hours and you guys can come and talk to me as long as we're in class many times you want. So we got one free bowl session for anybody who's on YouTube. Come and talk to me. And that's not a sales pitch. I'm not just trying to sell you something. I don't have anything to sell you. So, well, I guess I do. What do I have to sell you? Pit News Magazine. You guys need to register for Pit News Magazine. There you go. One free bowl session with Lan. <clears throat> Here's my online calendar. HTTPS colon slash slash. Landturner.setmore.com. If you go to that URL and you sign up, then I will call you at whatever times are available. You can pick because those are the times I'm available. And I will call you on the telephone. Now, if you guys are overseas, some of you guys want to do this from, from Oliver. If you want to do it from Frankfurt, then uh, we gotta. I'll send you an email with a, a link to a go-to meeting one of those zoom meeting things and we can, we can do it over the internet. All right. So we have to spend a thousand dollars on phone calls over international phone calls. So that's my, that's my one free bull session. Anybody who wants it, come and talk. Let's talk about your goals so we can make that happen for you. All right. We'll see where we are. See what, uh, see what we can do to help you. All right. What's going on now? Let's see. Go, I'll look forward to talking to you, Oliver. We'll 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 take a look at, at what's going on and what's happening and see where we can got to use stops. That's the whole name of the game. If that market starts, if you get in and it doesn't just immediately move in your favor, just get back out. You can do that. You know, you can if the market's not trending. Obviously, you don't want to keep trying. Don't try and get initial breakouts. Don't try and don't try and uh you know, this market's dead right now. It's just going sideways. So we got to wait for a market to start to move and trend. Okay. It's just kind of going sideways right now, right here. We got to, we got to, we got to wait for it to kind of start doing this kind of thing. While we were talking, the market were, ooh, that really beautiful trend right there. 
That was a beautiful move in the NASDAQ. Holy cow, look at that thing. That's a moneymaker right there. That's where you get all your money back, Oliver. Where'd you find a market doing this? And then there's our buy signal right there. There's our signal. And that was a little one. I skipped that one because it didn't give me, an, I didn't think it was a good enough rebound. I thought that might come down. I didn't want to go long on it right there because we'd gone up here and then we came down a long set of dots, short set of dots, long set of dots, short set. I thought we might do another thing like that. So we have to wait for it to actually give us that little run. And once we get the little run, then we get the little pullback. That's your signal for entry. And then you look for the next leg up. Now, sometimes it doesn't do the little breaks. It just flushes like that one. That was a beautiful thing. Then up, down, little up. Now we're getting a little down in here. Now we're going to see if we get a little up in here. If we do, we can go for the next leg down. But sometimes it just goes flush. So sometimes you have to do the, the high canashies do that. You have to turn the high canashies off. And then you can see the little pullbacks that don't show up in the high canashi. Sometimes high canashi hides our little buy signals and sell signals, like right there. That's a little sell signal right there. <clears throat> that we didn't see because we had high Ashi turned on. So see, once you get in, you can turn high Ashi on. Sometimes you have to turn it off so you can see these little buy sell signals in there. And you can see the chop, 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 chop a little better. See this? These are range bars without high Ashi. So see all the chop, 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 chop. This is doing that. You don't want to be trading it. And then you look for it to do this. So we expect it to go nice and smooth. Chop, 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 chop. Nice and smooth. Chop, 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 chop. Nice and smooth. Okay, so we got nice and smooth. Nice smooth downtrend. We get it broke out of this thing. And then we'll watch it go chop, 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 chop. And then we'll try and get it to see nice and smooth again. The counter trends are always chop, 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 chop. The trends are always smooth, 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 smooth. All right? Not always. Not always. Nothing's ever always in these markets. There's nothing that's always... Can't rely on anything 100%. Market always, it's always, it's a game. It's a carnival game. It's designed to mess you up. All right. It's designed to mess you up. Here it is, coming right back down to the magic blue line. Just like Lan said. Just like Bruce said. Just like Bruce said. Coming right back down to the magic blue line. Just like Bruce said. All right. We're getting a little bit of a rally in here. <clears throat> Bouncing off the magic blue line. Got a little. Green, red, green here, little red here. Let's come back and turn on our high Ashy. That could be a sell signal right there. We could put one on right there, going from red to green. Green, this is red. We anticipate the changeover from green to red. Green to red. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Look at the rustle. Holy cow. We were talking about that earlier, where we were saying the rustle is oftentimes the big winner. Look at that thing. Holy cow. Smoke, smoking. That the baby rocking and rolling over there who was paying attention to that one that got that beautiful little uh, nice run down little counter trend all the way back down to the blue line just like a train on rails right out of the manual gonna come down and touch that blue line we'll just take it off at the blue line stop come in here oh, oh wrong market make sure you're on the right chart land plebeian mistake there you go Took our profits off on that one. Now that was the NASDAQ, so it was a tiny market. We're on the micro mini on the NASDAQ, so that wasn't a big, wasn't giant, but that was a good little trade. We caught that little red run right there. <clears throat> All right. Boy, that Russell really. How many of you caught that Russell trade? I know everybody in here did. You guys all caught the Russell trade, but I did not. Oliver, how come you lost so much money? Did you just keep trading after you lost a little bit? Did you go on a banshee run? Made 90 bucks of it back today. Good. Small steps, get back. Get, you know, warm yourself back up to it. Small steps. Russell 2000. Here we go. Oh, look at it go. Look at it go. Russell's on fire today. What you gonna do, Mr. Russell? Whoa, look at the Russell. What's the Dow doing? What you doing, Lan? You just sitting on your hands. I know, I know. These things are moving too fast. That that that, that Russell. The Russell has some muscle. I think that, that NASDAQ wants to rally here. I think it wants to bounce off that blue line and go up, but no, it says not this time. Not this time. 
the Dow's going up. <clears throat> S&P's bouncing off the magic blue line. Came all the way back down to the magic blue line. Now it wants to go up. You want to try and take it off of there? No, not right now. Oh, 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 look, there goes the Russell. There goes the Russell, breaking, breaking higher. We're going to try that one. We're going to take that Russell shot. Oh, it tricked us. It tricked us. It knew we were going to do that. Oh, there it goes. Didn't trick us too bad. I thought we were going to get nailed on that. Oh, it's moving too fast. Ooh, that's a scary one. We better slow that baby down. That Russell's moving too fast. What can we do to slow it down? We can slow it down a little bit here. Maybe what we'll do is we'll go to a range bar 25, see what that does to it. Well, that slowed it down. Maybe a little bit too much. Slow it down too much. We can change that. We can make it... Uh, we were at 6. What if we went to 12? We doubled it. See what that does. Slow it down just a little bit for us. That's a little better. Let's make those candlesticks. Anytime you change those, for some reason, it flips it back. All right, we'll watch it. And we'll slow that one down just a little bit. It's a little bit too rambunctious. So I got that and running at 12 now. So it's not quite so rambunctious. We might. Yeah, the NASDAQ's just died on us, going sideways. Oliver, if you get in and it starts to go against you, just get out. Just get back out. All right. When you call me on the telephone, that's what I'm going to tell you. Oliver, if it starts to go against you after you get in, just get back out. Red to green, red to green, red to green. <laughs> oh, now you admit it. Now you admit it. You went Vegas on me. You, you went Vegas on me. All right, I get it. I see how you are. You left the carnival game and went to Vegas instead. <laughs> I don't know which is better. Carnival game, at least you can... You got some strategy to it. You can maybe win. Vegas, it's all luck. All right, here we go with the NASDAQ. It's trying to go, go higher. Look at the NASDAQ go. What's it going to do? What's it going to do? What's it going to do? Come on, baby. Come on. Let's rock and roll. Let's catch some trends. Boy, that Russell. There's a little tiny pullback there on the NASDAQ. It didn't go red. We're going to, oh, we're going to break higher on the Dow. Let's, let's see if that Dow wants to run. Put your stop in there tight. Don't let it come against you. If it just comes against you, just get back out. If that doesn't continue, just get back out. As soon as we start losing, we're going to be done. Go over to the stock market. Start playing with options. Today's options day. We got to go sell some options. We learned about buying options on Monday. Now, yesterday was Wednesday's class. We are going to learn about selling options, taking premiums. So we're going to go do a little bit of that. I'm going to show you how to put those on. I'm going to show you how to read some of the charts. We're going to look at the options chain. We're going to learn a little bit about options. The options chain. Come on, Dow. Get your hiney hind going. Edit. Trail. ATR. Come on. Come on, Dow. Get her up. Get her up there. Giddy up. Giddy up. Spank it. Spank it. Come on. Come on. Don't take me out now. Give me a chance to get my stop to break even. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. There's another $100 in the bank. Not not in the bank land. It's not closed out yet. Oh, there it goes. 
There we go. Oh, oh my goodness, you caught a good one. You caught a good one. How come you don't have more than one in there? So I didn't believe it was going to do this. I thought it might just stop us out. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <clears throat> one more, one more, and we can take some profits. We'll we'll castle. Castle? What's that, Lan? I'll show you as soon as we get one more. One more bar. Come on, do it so I can castle. I want to castle. Castle, castle, castle. Come on, push it up there. I want to castle. I want to castle. There we go. Okay, we're going to buy one, then we're going to immediately sell it. That put our order right at the break-even point. So we took the profits off. Now we're going to let the rest run. So we dollar cost averaged out some profits. Oftentimes people dollar cost average in. I like to dollar cost average out. If I dollar cost average out, I take some profits. Now, why don't you take that one right there? Land, why don't you take that signal for the long side right there? Well, that's a reversal signal. The market's down, lower highs and lower lows. So we got a lower high. We got a high right there. We got a lower high right there. We're in a downtrend. That's a lower high. That would be trying to catch a reversal. I don't like to catch reversals. Reversals are really hard to catch. I like a market that's already moving higher. So if we make higher highs and higher lows, once we start making higher highs and higher lows, that's where I like to get in. That's just my, you know, that's just me. I don't like to try and catch the reversals. Reversals are hard because it could come up and then make you think it's going to reverse and then just turn and go down again and make another lower high. See, so that's a downtrend, lower highs and lower lows. So that would be a good place to take a short position right there. But I don't really want to do that on this market because it looks like it wants to try and turn around. My goodness, let's castle again. Bye. Rock and roll on Dow. Holy cow, nice move, land. Got my two in there. I'm going to take one off as soon as it starts to show some weakness. Watch the little tiny chart in the upper window, upper right-hand corner. Watch the tiny chart. Watch the tiny chart. Tiny chart is your time and sales. Every single time, uh, if that thing continues to rally, it continues the market's going up, 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 and away. Feel like Superman. All right. When you finally catch one, you catch one. It's like catching a big fish, I'm trying to reel this baby in. Go, baby, go. We're going long too. We got a single contract trailing stop. As long as it wants to go up, we'll keep that second one on. Oh, it wants to really go. It's really going. We really caught a whale of a fish today. <clears throat> Should we castle again? We can. Buy one. Look at that. Sell that. Take some profit. Okay, we still got two. Well, it shows weakness. Watch the tiny chart. Watch the tiny chart. <clears throat> Keep going, baby. Keep her going. Keep her going. Keep her going. Keep her going. This is called <clears throat> King Tut. You're castling. When you're castling, you're doing this. Is this is called a? <clears throat> it's called a pillar. We're trading a pillar right now. I'm not pyramiding. I'm pillaring. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Bye. Woohoo! Rock and roll. Little weakness on the tiny chart will take us take some profits. Take profits along the way. Don't build an upside down pyramid. There, take, take some profits. Start to show a little weakness. Okay, we still got one on there, extra one, so we can take the profit. As soon as it shows the extra weakness, we'll take it off. But it's going to keep showing strength. We'll stay on there. Come on, baby. Come on, rock and roll. Keep her going. We can castle again. You want to castle again? Let's do it one more time. Buy, sell. Took some profits. Dollar cost average out, not dollar cost average in. Okay, we got one more. Oh, we're out. Took our profits. We're out of that baby. $490. Woo! One good trade away. There we go. That's how it's done. You just got to catch one. You just got to catch one. Well done. Well done, Lan. Well done. All right, guys, that's how you do it. If you can catch one, if you can catch one, now what's it going to do? Is it going to just turn and flush all the way back down? Probably. Good. Don't know. Sometimes the reason they bought it is because they want it. 
All right. What you going to do? What you going to do? Russell slowed right down. We put it on those range bar 12s, and it slowed right down and died on us. But that was a good move on the on the Dow. We got the Fibonacci sweet spot right in here. Come back to there. It probably come back in there and probably come back down here and then just go sideways for a little while. We should go over the stock market and do some options. Oh, they might take it up. This might be another rally opportunity if it goes green. But it's on its way down right now. Oh, look, there's the S and P's trying to go. Red to gr red to green land, red to green. Markets are hot. Even the S&P is going up today. Everything wants to trend. All right. Even the S&P is trying to, trying to play today. Didn't quite go all the way down into the sweet spot, did it? Came down and hit 38.2 and it's bouncing. <clears throat> question is, is it going to be a bounce to, to go, or is it going to just be a small bounce and another drop down? We don't know. Do you want to take a chance? You want to play it? Huh? You want to throw your dart? <clears throat> no, we're going to go over and trade options. We're at $490. Our goal is, wait, what's our goal? I don't think our goal, who was, who was that that asked what software I'm using? I can't remember who asked. Track and trade. This is the software I'm using, all right? So if you guys want to trade like I trade with the software I'm using, this is the software I use. For futures trading, I like to do the scalping. I like to do this, the day trading here on the, with the futures version. When I trade, I make money like I just made, like, well, <laughs> if this was real money, this would be uh, $490. We would then take it over to the stock market and buy options. That's what I like to do with my real money when, I, when I'm trading real money. But here in class, we don't trade real money. This is an educational forum. This is where we learn. All right, so I'm teaching. So we use demo money because we do lots of stuff that we probably wouldn't do otherwise. <clears throat> that one, though, was a good trade. We'd have done that one. This would have been a right straight out of the book. That's what we try and stick to the book. But we got to learn, too. So this is a lab for our class at the university. But everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. <clears throat> so we're going to go over. And we're going to... See, that's why I didn't want to take that one. I thought it would come down, make a little up, and another down. ABC to the downside into the Fibonacci sweet spot. <clears throat> we could have taken that short position once it went red, but I don't think it's going to go that strong. It might. It might drop pretty hard, but it's at least coming down into the Fibonacci sweet spot. All right. That's the software we're using. Did I say that that was the software we're using, Track and Trade? Go to trackandtrade.com, download your version, come over here, join us, have fun. It's one Stocks and Commodities Annual Reader's Choice Award seven times. It says six right here, but that, that needs to be updated. We just won it again <laughs> since I made this picture. So that's seven times we won Stocks and Commodities Annual Reader's Choice Award. So people love track and trade. All right, seven years. That's seven years we've won that award. That's an annual award. It only comes out once a year. Oh, you know what? While I'm looking at it, I better warn you guys. Be very careful. <clears throat> Fraud alert. Scammers have found me. You come and get on YouTube, they find you. I will never call you on the phone. I will never send you an email. I'll never private message you. I'll never ask you to trade or send me money. All right? Don't send me money. I don't want your money. So it's not me if somebody contacts you and does that. Please don't fall for that bull crap. All right? I do not trade other people's money for them. I will never ask you to send me money so I can trade or invest it for you. I will never contact you in cryptocurrency trade recommendations. That's not me. All right. They found me and I've been reported. There's been people, my own sister-in-law, not, not sister-in-law, my nephew's wife. What does that make her? My nephew's wife got scammed. They contacted her and she thought it was me saying, oh, you need to get into this. And she sent him a bunch of money. She's not the only one but they caught my own little niece, niece-in-law. Is that what that would be? A niece-in-law. Never heard that term. Maybe I just made it up. I make up a lot of things. <laughs> my niece-in-law got caught. All right, what are we trying to find here for you? 
<clears throat> We're trying to find the options stuff. There we go. Apple went nuts on us. We bought a put on option on, oh, this is the queues, because we thought maybe the queues would fall. So we bought a put. That was stupid. Liquidate that baby. Cut your loser short. Market that out of that baby. We don't want that on there anymore. We were going up. Look at these drives. Drive one, drive two, drive three, drive four, drive five. Remember when I said markets have a tendency to go to the third drive? Drive one, drive two, drive three, and then they usually get an ABC back. And then I always I always clarified that and said, doesn't mean it can't go to drive four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It certainly can. It's just really rare. Why is it so rare? Well, because it doesn't happen very often. If something doesn't happen very often, it's rare. But why did this one do it? Why did this one go to the moon like that and go to drive five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Why is it doing that? Well, because the government is printing money like there's no tomorrow. They put some Tesla batteries into their new printing press, and man, that thing can print like you've never seen. They got rid of the old diesel presses, and they got a new electric presses, and man, they can print money like you, just going out of style. And so what happens when the, when the government prints money so fast? They have to push it out into the economy, and where does the economy, where does it go? Goes into the economy. Well, who's the economy? Well, in the great state of America, great country of America, that's the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the world. And so they're benefiting from all this money getting printed and being pushed out into the market. So that's one thing that keeps the stock market rising. As the government prints money, it's got to go out into the economy. And who is the economy? Well, the economy is the big 500 companies. So they're making money hand over fist. Now, a lot of this is spurred by the uh, AI stuff because the AI companies are going nuts, going crazy. And so um, YouTube portfolio. So the AI companies are going nuts. So if you look at the individual sectors, that's why the Q is going through the roof. All right. So is the S&P because it's dragging them up. But if you remember, we talked about Apple. Apple just announced that they're getting, that they made some agree agree agreements and some arrangements with some AI companies. We thought AI that uh, Apple was going to come out and make their own AI system. We thought they were going to go out and start creating something on their own, right? That's what you'd think Apple would do is that they'd say, oh, well, Google's making their own AI systems. Oh, open AI, you know, chat GPT is making their own systems, which is actually Microsoft. Microsoft just announced they're going to make their own system, not chat GPTs anymore. Cause you know, they need to do that. And then, of course, Elon Musk has Gork, Gork, Gark, Dork. I can't remember. I can't remember his name. Anyway, he's got one that you can get. If you sign up for Twitter, you get you get Dork. And then um, who else? Well, there's about 10 of them out there. Uh, Meta. Don't forget Meta. Uh, old Mark Zuckerberg. He's making AI systems. So Meta. Let's go look at Meta's stock. See, he's going to the moon. Look at that. It's all the AI guys that are making money. <clears throat> well, Apple, as we were complaining, hadn't done anything in the AI space. So that's why their stock was coming down. They haven't been selling any iPhones. Nobody wants a new iPhone. Why? Because they're the same damn thing as the last one they just bought. Make the camera a little bit, you know, stick a little lens on there, a little thing, and sell you a new iPhone every year. They're not worth buying. So everybody's not, nobody's buying iPhones. And then so Apple starts buying their own stock back to prop their stock up because they don't want anybody to think that they are not doing well. So they lie to you <clears throat> by buying their own shares back. Oh, we've got so much cash. We have to buy our shares back. That's good for, our, yeah, it's good for them because you can't sell anything. So you have to buy your own shares back. So you prop your stock up. Of course, it's good for the people who own your stock. That's why you're doing it because you're not selling anything. So you got to start doing something that makes people want to buy your shit again. Apple, come on. So they started, well, they decided that they're not going to write their own AI. So they went out and they <clears throat> they um, contracted with somebody else to buy AI. They uh, buy their AI stuff, which is probably a, a good thing. It just, I don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to AI stuff. So they just went and bought somebody else's. They contracted somebody else and they're going to put 
their stuff, their AI system into Siri. So Siri won't be stupid anymore. She won't be a moron. Where Siri, can you tell me something that I don't know? I'm asking you a question. <clears throat> Siri always comes back. This is what I found on the web. Search, right? So it's worthless. Siri can't do hardly anything. So they're going to put AI, but they're not. They're going to not going to put their own AI. They're going to put somebody else's AI into Siri, so Siri can brighten up a little bit. And that's what's caused this market to turn a little bit. Now, is it what's caused the market to turn? Maybe, but we're down here hitting some support levels. You got to remember these markets are manipulated quite significantly. And so um, the markets have come down. This might be an opportunity for us to see this market go and continue a rally and a recovery and back up. Everything else is going back up. Why not Apple, right? They've started to finally announce that they're getting into the AI space. This might be the, the turning point. Now, what have we got going here? We've got a covered call. What's a covered call, Lan? Well, we bought 100 shares off this bounce, off this low point right down in here. We got in with 100 shares, and we sold those 100 shares right there. Wait, that's not selling the 100 shares. You just sold a call. Well, that's the same thing, right? Because one call, uh, one option represents 100 shares. So if we're long with the 100 shares and we put a sell a call up above them, then we just sold the 100 shares right there. So they gave us, or they're going to give us right now, <laughs> because the market's going against us, we could have bought them at $40 less than we did. That's what that's telling us. But we received $200, $201. So if the market comes up, the 100 shares comes up to there, how much do we get to make? Will we make the difference between where we bought it and where we sold it? That would be $730. $730 would be our max profit that we can make on those 100 shares. Why? Because we contracted to sell them right there. And because we contracted to sell them right there for, for $200, they're going to give us the $200. So we get $730 plus we get $200. Now, what's the risk there? This is the one in the hand, two in the bush. If you didn't, if you thought Apple was going to go much higher than two hundred dollars above the red line, then you wouldn't want to do this because you could collect the intrinsic value, right? The intrinsic value is the value of the option or the shares themselves. So this is two hundred dollars. So there's your, there's your. If the market goes above that point right there, you shouldn't have done it. Okay. So right there, touch it, touch it, land. There you go. So if you think the market was going to go above that white line, you should not have done this strategy. You shouldn't have sold them right there. Now, they're going to pay you $200 to sell them. And that's why the white line is up there at the white line. What's where it is. And But if the market doesn't go up there, then you're going to make more money. You're going to get your $200. The question is, if it flushes and comes down and makes another drive down, then Apple could come all the way down here and you could lose all this money, right? But you're still going to make your $200. So you get to say, well, I get to keep my $200 and Apple comes down here and you lose your stock. Well, I wasn't going to sell my stock anyway, because I love Apple and I think Apple's going to go to the moon eventually. I'm just going to hang on to it forever. Well, then you just as well make 200 bucks in the process of having it do that. You can make your $200 and if it comes down, you can sell another one, make another $200, sell another one, make another $200 and just keep following down until Apple turns around and starts to go back up. So that's what that idea is. That's, that's a covered call. We're going to cover that in greater detail in class, talk about the intricacies of it, but that's that's a quick covered call, all right? So right now, we're doing pretty good. Our $200 actually hasn't decayed, decayed a lot because the market's moving in our favor. So what's happening is the intrinsic value of the stock is rising and it's making the, intr the intrinsic value of the, well, there is no intrinsic value in those options. So the extrinsic value isn't decaying. So we need the extrinsic value, time decay to decay. The closer we get to that purple line, the more it'll decay. Well, I don't like to go out too far on those purple lines. 30 days is about as far as I like to go. I like to think about it as a rent. It's like taking rent, right? We're if, if, if we're just renting out our stocks, renting out our Apple shares, that's our rent that we're collecting. We're going to collect $200. So if you go $39, you kind of get stuck in the trade. And I don't like to get stuck in a trade. So you get stuck in the trade because you feel like you have to wait for it to hit the purple line. And if that market just turned and went to the moon, 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 we'd lose all that money. So you don't want to have that stupid option sitting there stuck in the trade, trying to collect $200, missing out on $1,600. So don't, don't make those covered calls too long. All right. Unless you're selling a covered call way out here, you know, more time, you can do that. But depends on where you're, but there's no money in them usually, unless you have a lot more time. But then you have to be a lot farther away from the market, so it gives it more time, right? 
That's why you need to be good at your Fibonacci projections and doing those Fibonacci uh, cone of probability. So you can project where that market's going to go, and then you can sell your premium out there and collect premium before at the maximum profit potential. That's the name of the game. Oh, that's a big word, Land. Maximum profit potential. All right. What is a Fibonacci cone of probability? I've never heard of that. You never heard of it? What do you mean you never heard of it? Well, that's because you haven't got my book. If you get my book, <laughs> shameless plug, come and get my book. It'll teach you about the Fibonacci cone of probability in here. Uh, where's it at? I don't know which page. This book is, uh, you can get the electronic version. You can buy the electronic version on my website. If you just go to trade tradementors.com, you can buy the, like, there it is. Fibonacci cone of project, pro, cone of Fibon, Fibonacci cone of probability. So when you're going to do your covered calls and you want to buy them longer and further out than just 30 days, you want to do one that's maybe 60 or 90 days, you need to do your cone of probability projections to figure out where this market's going to go over any period of time so that you can make a better projection. And if you don't know how to do a Fibonacci cone of projection, it's in my book. But let's do one right now. Come in here. We grab this tool right here. We go A, B, C like that. And we drop that down in there. And then we take the A, B, C off the next high right here. And we go A, B, C to this one like that. And then that's not working out for us. Cone of probabilities go the other direction. So we got to go out to here, this high, here, 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 up to there. And that's not really giving us a cone of probability either. Let's see. We got to have two points, two Fibonacci points. Let's see if we can go off of here, here. That's not really giving us what we want either, is it? Let's try. Oh, that's what we got to do right there. And then we're going to put this one right here. That's why I did it wrong. Okay. See, look in the manual. <laughs> it's right there on the screen, man. Do the manual. Okay. Here we go. So I didn't have that on there. So here's how we do this. Let's get rid of these. So we're going to do the Fibonacci projection, just like out of the book. One, two, three. So we're going to start with this leg over here. We're going to come down to this point here, right there. And then we're going to take this leg here. We're going to go from here, same point, B points in the same spot. C points in the same spot. The only difference is the two A points back here. Now, what that gives us is it gives us a cone of probability. That tells us where we think the market's going to go in price and time. So here it is. So we go from 200. We'll just draw this in here for 161. And there's your cone of probability. All right. So that kind of tells you where this market's going to go by doing this little cone of probability off of the Bs and the Cs. And the only thing you change is the A location. So that's the previous cone, right? So that's what Fibonacci is all about. It's mirroring the market, saying if this was the previous cone, then we're going to mirror the market, and the reverse cone is right here. And so that's how you get a Fibonacci cone of probability, and then you kind of have an idea of where the market's going to go in price and time. Does it work every time? No, it doesn't work every time. Does it work a lot of the time? Yeah, it works enough that you can willing to, to, uh, to uh, 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 where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? gamble on it. Where's Oliver's gamble comment? I was going to put that in here. I was gambling. It's worth putting money on, but we're not gambling. We're doing a swag, a scientific wild ass guess. All right. So at least we're doing a scientific wild ass guess. So that's where the cone of probability tells us that this market's going to go. That's pretty cool, right? That's how that works. And so that's a Fibonacci cone of probability. And so then when you're going to do your your projections of where you think the market's going to go, you have a better idea of where the market's going to go. So you can come in here and you can place your options and you know the time. So options is all about price and time. Now, placing an option is easy. I can show you how to place options. That's not the hard part. The hard part about trading is knowing when to place the options, when to get into the market, how far, how much time to buy. That's the hard part of trading options. All right. You have to do that kind of mathematical modeling so that you can get a better idea of when to trade, when to buy, when to sell. So let's come in and go to a different market. Let's go to ADM, Archer's Daniel Midland. Okay. So what we've done here is last week we came in and with the, you can see that we were doing a little bit of scaling in here, trying to figure out where we thought this market was going to go. Now it's going up. We're up $110 on this call option that we bought. And uh, probably not the best time to have bought it. We should have bought it down here as we were breaking those blue lights to the upside. But we wanted to see that, you know, 
Sometimes you want to make sure the market's going to go. We we'll get a little pullback, and then that's where you want to buy, right? Just like when we day trade. We're, when you day trade, you're doing the exact same thing when you're doing long-term position trades. It's not any different. We're doing the same thing. We're just doing it on a longer-term time frame, just giving our markets more time to do the moves, all right? It doesn't matter whether you're on a one-minute chart or whether you're on your daily chart. You're going to do the same thing. You want to see a market that's moving. You want to see the little pullback into the red bars. You know, the first green candle to make a new high. You want it to correspond with your, your indicators, and away you go. You want to take that next leg up. That's the idea. That's trading. Now, investing is a little different. Investing means that you're going to go in, you're going to buy something, you're going to hang on to it until the day you die, and you're never going to sell it. Well, if that's the case, then we got some other strategies that you can do. That's where covered calls come in. So if you're going to buy some shares like Apple, and you can say, well, I'm just going to buy these apples, and I'm never going to sell them. I'm going to give them to my son when I die. All right, well, then you might as well make some money from it, because if you don't sell it, you don't ever make any money. Well, you can make some a little bit of money maybe with some dividends, right? Because you can do that too. So oftentimes we'll go into an, a stock then we'll buy the shares that have a, a large dividend. That's how we make money with bonds. Bonds are very stable. They don't have a real lot of movement in the intrinsic value. And that's why we buy bonds because we don't want them to have a lot of intrinsic value. We don't want them to move a lot, but we want them to throw off a high number of a, a big, um, a big, uh, a percent, a large percent in the, in the, in the extrinsic value which is the dividend, right? So we want the dividend to be a large dividend on a very stable market. That's a bond. That's why we buy bonds so that the market doesn't fluctuate a lot and scare us, but yet it throws off a lot of interest, okay? Well, when you buy Apple and you say, well, I'm going to buy Apple and I'm never going to sell it. Well, Apple has not got a big dividend, tiny little dividend, 1% a year or something. So they consider themselves a growth stock, even though they're the largest company in the world. They still consider them a growth stock. And so they don't give dividends. They don't share their profits with you. So you have to only get intrinsic value off of them. Well, if that's the case, that's why we do covered calls. We try to collect some interest, right? We try to collect some rent off this stock that you're going to hang on to for the rest of your life. So there's got to be some way that you make profit off of it. Otherwise, why do it? All right. Well, because it's going to grow, 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 and be big, big, big. True, very true. Very could do, very well could do that. But in the meantime, might as well rent it out, make some money off of it. All right, if you're going to buy a house and you're not going to live in it, might as well rent it, collect some premium, collect some, collect some rent. If you're not going to live in it, collect some rent, and that's what that's all about. All right, back to Atcher's Daniel Midgillen. Okay, here we go. So we're rallying up. What do we want to do on this thing? Well, we could come in here and we could do the same thing. We could sell a call against it and collect some premium. That would be a that would be a covered call, right? Uh, and not really. This would be kind of what we call what we'd call a if you did a short term. Let's come in here and we're going to sell one against sell a call up here. Collect some premium. We got to have more than one day. Let's do twenty nine days, and we're going to sell a call up here. Well, there's not much money in it. That's only $70, $70. Well, it depends on how far you think that market's going to go. It's got 30 days. Let's see if we can find some volume and open interest a little bit closer. Let's go 15 days. Now what we have to do is we have to come down here to the options chain. And in the options chain down here, you can see I've picked 15 days. That means we have 15 days until this thing's going to die and have the expiration. And so if we look down here, we have the premium. That's $140. Oh, it just went to at the money is a $90 option. So you could buy another one at $90. So if you wanted to, you could buy that and I'd put another option in there at $90. Now that's only for 15 days. This one out here, we got at 92 days. So you can buy more time. All right. More time is going to cost more money. If we come out here to 92 days. Now we want to buy one at the money. It's $335. All right. We paid $370 for that one. This one's only $335. That's because the market's already started to move in our favor a little bit. So it's less money. That's the intrinsic value. The difference between where we bought it and where it's currently trading is now the difference between $335 and $370. And so there's your intrinsic value increase. There's $105 on the profit. So that's what we're making on this one. Market value is $475. So that's what this would be if we dropped it down there before $75. But since it's out here, it's $335. All right. So it's now $335. That's the difference between the intrinsic value of the one we bought and the intrinsic value of where it's currently trading, 375 to 335. That's pretty damn cool. All right, so let's go ahead and delete that off the screen. We're not buying another one. What we want to do is anticipate that this might rally up, turn around and come back down. I'd do a Fibonacci cone of probability, but kind of 
Let's try it. Kind of looking pretty ugly in here right now. Where are we going to anticipate that high at? I'll come back here and do the other one. So there's your cone of probability if that market went up there. The thing, the thing we don't know right now is we don't know where this point is. It hasn't turned and started to fall, so we don't have a cone of probability to the downside. And we can't project to the upside because we don't have two A points yet. So this would be a downside potential if this might, well, let's put it right at where it's currently trading. Okay, so there's your cone of probability to the downside. So it'd go from here, boom, 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 boom. Oh, like this. Doing a backwards land. One, two, three. There's your cone of probability. If that thing turns and starts to fall right now, that would be where we would anticipate based on the previous downtrend, which is this cone of probability, right? Right here. So we're mirroring this cone. So this cone here creates the rebound, and then the next cone down would be like that. So that's a downside potential on the cone of probability to the downside. Now, to get an up of cone, a projection to the upside, we have to have a market that would come in and give us the ability to have an ABC here. Oh, i got to use the right tool. So we go up like that, down like that. And then we have a second A point, which we'd have to, let's say back here, let's say it's on the way up like that. So that would be our next cone of probability. And that's how we would, would um, calculate where we think that market's going to go. So based on the movement of the previous market, right? we would anticipate the movement of the next market. So that's the volatility. And all we're really doing is we're just calculating. It's all geometry, all right? This is geometrical trading, geometry, swag, scientific, wild-ass guess. We might as well be as scientific and wild-ass as we can about our guesses, all right? We don't want to just be wild-ass guessing. We want to be scientific wild-ass guessing. So this is your, your first mirror, and that's your second mirror. And so we're going to mirror the volatility and the time. So that's a price and time. So the amount of time that this one took, if it took this much time before, right, that was 45 days in this example, then we would look out 45 days in this example. And we would go from the C point and the rally, and it would be a price and time. So the price and time scale. That's how you get price and time on a Fibonacci projection from a previous trend to the next trend. Now, this one here is projecting down right now. We don't have, well, we could. Let's let's try it. See what it would do. From here to here, we don't have a pullback yet. We got to get a pullback. So the pullback would give us here. Let's say that we go here. Let's just say this is the other A here. Let's say the same pullback. That would be our Fibonacci cone of probability right there. So we're going to go here, here, here. Does Land have any secrets that he doesn't teach to people very often that he does and doesn't show us. Yes, he does. It's called the cone of probability, but I show it to you. It's in the book. I teach it to you. There you go. I'm just teaching it to you today. So don't say I don't teach you things, things that I do that um, I don't teach you. Now I've taught you one of my secret weapons. It's called Fibonacci cone of probability. All right. It's all geometry, but you have to have the right points. You know, you can't do geometry if you only have half the formula. So you have to kind of wait for a market to give you the points that you need. And we're anticipating this market's bullish. Um, so we would need to have some Fibonacci ABC patterns before we can start making our Fibonacci projections. So if we wanted to, we could come in here and we could sell. I'm going to come back and I'm going to sell a 15-day option. We could even do a shorter one, seven. But we got to have volume and open interest. And it looks like there's enough. There's enough volume open interest, but we're not going to get much money out of it. So we're, we're going to sell a call. And there's only $7.50. It's not worth it. Why do it? Let's go back out here to 15 days. Any volume? No volume. Open interest? It's not above 1,000. Not above 100, not above 1,000. You don't want to do it. Why? Why Why does that make a difference, Lan? Why do you care? Well, because the spread gets really wide. Look how wide the spread is. It's $10. And if you have a lot of volume and a lot of open interest, the spread will be smaller. Let's go find one and I'll show you. So if we come down here to 29 days, we have higher volume. High, oh, the spread's still the same. So it's not high enough to bring the spread down. The spread's still $10 at 29 days. Let's come out here, 57 days. Now see, now the spread's $5. So the spread went half. Still got low volume, 23 and one, but we don't want to sell one out there. 57 days. Sell a call. 
So you're only going to make $55 and you have to hang on to it for 55 days. Sometimes it's just not worth it. If we come down here, let's do, let's do uh, 15 days again. I want to look at one more thing. We're going to sell a call at the money, just one above it right there. That'd be $210 that we'd collect. Now, how far would the market have to go to make us $210? We'd have to go, well, it doesn't have to go very far. $210 is only right there at expiration. Remember, that's at expiration. So by expiration, it'd only have to be above that point right there. And we're already up to give us $210 to put that option in there. But we can sell one. We could sell one right there. We could. Because it would be selling it at the exact same price we bought it. That'd be kind of a weird covered call. Then that actually wouldn't be a covered call. It'd actually be called a bulk call spread. All right. They got different names for them. Don't really worry about the name. Just think about what's happening. You're buying one here and you're trying to sell one to collect some premium. So you're trying to sell a call to collect some premium. How much are you going to sell if it hits this one? You're going to, so basically you're just buying it here and you're selling it there. That's all you're doing. It's just like putting on a limit order. If you get into a trade, you buy one here, you sell one there. That's the money that you're going to make. You're going to make $55. Well, you're going to also make the intrinsic value, the difference between where you bought it and where you sold it, which is here. So you make $380. Of course, it's by that purple line right there. You're going to make, and that's $380, and you're going to make $57.50. But it's almost there now. So you kind of would be cutting yourself short because the chances could go up here, and anything above that, you wouldn't make. So that's the game you have to play. You have to decide if you want one in the hand or two in the two in the bush. One in the hand, two in the bush. All right. Now, let's come in. That's if we're going to come in here. Let's go look at another one. See if we can't find, uh, there's nothing on this one. Albermackie. Albemarle, Alba, Albemarle, Albemarle. This thing's going dead. How did we choose these? What did we pick these from? Most of these are from, weren't they from Kramer? I think we went through and we got an email from Jim Kramer from MSNBC. And he said, Lan, you should buy all these stocks. So we went and put them in our portfolio and looked at them. Okay, we're long 50. Oh, wow. That thing came right back. It rallied up. We missed our opportunity to take our profits on that thing when it cascaded back down. Now it's sitting right here at break even. We got 50 shares, not 100, $21. Let's see if there's any options prob options opportunities in here. 29, all the volume, all the open interest, all zero, all nothing. You know what? We don't want to take the opportunity or the chance of losing money on this. So we're going to come in here and we're going to put a stop in here. We only have 50 shares. So we're going to do that, drop that in there. And we're just going to put that in there. If it doesn't just immediately move in our favor, we'll just get out. We lost our opportunity, missed our opportunity to get in and take some profits off that thing. I need to turn on the bulls and bears. What the heck is going on here, Land? Turn off all this other crap. All right, that's better. All right, let's come down here to Caterpillar. What's Caterpillar doing? We didn't get into Caterpillar. Why didn't we get into Caterpillar? I don't know why we didn't get into Caterpillar. I think because we were already looking at was going into the third drive. So we got drive one. Drive two, drive three. But land, I just saw another stock go to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we did. But it was one of the indexes. Indexes are more likely to break that rule of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten drives. Stocks, not so much. Less so. Less so. But we're at the top of the third drive. I know a lot of people want to buy up there. People want to buy up there. But there's if you're going to buy, you have to wait for the signal. And there ain't no red bars right there. You have to buy on the little red bars. Remember, that's our signal. Red to green land, red to green, red to green, red to green. So if you're not buying red to green, you're going to get your hiney handed to you. You're going to probably get your hiney handed to you anyway, even when you buy red to green, because you buy red to green sometimes and it still turns and falls like that. But why did it fall after red to green land? Because it's in a downtrend. Lower highs and lower lows. Here's the high right here, right? So it's making lower highs and lower lows. It's coming down. Long set of dots, short set of dots. Long set of dots. Long set of dots is the trend. Short set of dots is the counter trend. Don't trade the counter trends. Trade the trends. But you want to catch a trend. But the way you do it is you buy getting in at the end of the counter trend. So you have to trade the counter trend, but that's where you get in. So the little yellow red dots right here, they're telling you where the counter trend is right there. See that? You draw your trend line across there. And so that's why we were using that magic stick the other day. And you can draw a trend line in there that will actually take an order if you want to do it that way. So you draw your trend line in there with a the magic stick. Get rid of this one. Do this one. And then when it comes across there, 
That's the counter trend. When it crosses those magic blue lines, uh, these are not magic blue. These are magic red because we got the, we got to turn these things off again. Let's turn on the bulls and bears. Bulls and bears. There we go. Turn off the red ones. Okay. Magic blue lines. There they are. Okay. So that's your counter trend right there. Didn't break as many times. This one's a, lot, a little cleaner. So then that's where you get in right there. See? So this is going from yellow to green, yellow to green. This is a different strategy. This is the bulls and bears, so it has a neutral zone in there. Rather than red to green, you're going yellow to green. So red, yellow to green, and it should match up with your blue lights. All that stuff comes together. This is where you take your signal. That's your entry. Well, we don't have that right now. Where was the other one? Well, the next one was right here. Take our line, draw it in there, right across there. And if we do our natural trend line, we got our mathematical trend. Oh, natural trend line mathematical trend line, right? And then we got our horizontal trend line. That's your spider web. Spider web, I heard you mention that once before, Lynn. Where can I get more information about your spider web? Oh, glad you asked. It's in my manual, along with all this other stuff that's in there. The spider web is also in here as well. So you can come in and you can learn all about the spider web. I don't know. There it is. So there's your spider web. It's in the manual. Go out to Amazon, search Lan H. Turner, and pick up this book. It's all in here. I feel bad. All right. Let's go clean ourselves up here. What's the Dow done? Holy cow. Maybe we should have just stayed over here and day traded because this thing's going like a banshee. Today was a wonderful day to be day trading. Oh, my goodness. The Dow is doing fantastic. Look at that. Got that RSI on there. Turn that off. Wow. We've had some good moves today. Okay. Let's do our, let's do at least do our spreadsheet. I got to have an alarm on. You know what? When I fly my airplane, I have an alarm on my watch that buzzes my, buzzes my wrist every 10 minutes. And it reminds me that I'm supposed to do my check every 10 minutes, my flight check. So then I go through and I check the fuel. I check my make sure it's on the right tank. I check everything. Buzzes my wrist every 10 minutes. Bzz, 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 reminds me to do that. You know what? I should wear my wrist <laughs> alarm and have it buzz me every one minute. Lan, are you looking at your chart? Lan, are you looking at your chart? Lan, are you looking at the chart? Lan, are you looking at the chart? So that I have a reminder not to do that. I got to stop doing that. How can I stop that YouTube thing? Because the YouTube's the one that does that. It keeps it on that monitor. And that monitor's clear over here and I can't see it. All right. Is today Wednesday or Thursday? What did we do yesterday? I didn't. Today's Thursday. Uh, what did we do yesterday? I can't even remember. We closed out some options. I think we made like $400 yesterday. We made 490 today. We'll put this one in 490.50. All right. So I can't remember what we did yesterday. I didn't write it down. Didn't did we make money yesterday? <laughs> John David Lumberg. Also make sure you're awake in the airplane. That's true. Also keeps me awake in the airplane. Sometimes you go on a long cross country in your little airplane and you turn on the autopilot. It's not too difficult to fall asleep. All right. I guess that's our, well, we got to come in here. I don't know what we did yesterday. I can't remember. I didn't write it down. We got to write down what this was. New note. New note. Day traded. Um, I think this was mostly Russell and Dow. Nice trade. Did the King Tut. King Tut strategy. Pillar. All right. Is that how you spell pillar or is it E-R? Pillar. 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 Who knows? All right. So there we go. So on Thursday, we got to mark that green. Did we reach our goal? Our daily goal was $227. We made $490. So we kicked our goal's ass. Kicked the goal's ass. How about that? So, oh, that's not the over here. Thursday. 
Matt, met our goal. Goal. Goal color. This one. We hit our goal. All right. There we go, guys. There's how you log it into your books. We're having a good month because we had that nice big win on, on an option over in the stock market. So there's there's that. There is that. And hopefully you saw that. It wasn't hidden somewhere. So, okay. I guess that's what I got for you today. I apologize for, that makes me feel bad. I really feel bad when I do that. I sit there, I got, I was on a, just on a good roll. Somebody needs to have my phone number. Michael Bruce, why don't you text me and say, Lan, I can't see your screen. <laughs> look at all these guys trying to get my attention. Can't see your screen. Can't see your screen. Look, look, can't see your screen. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll try to get my attention, but I was just so enthralled in what we were talking about. Look at that Dow. That's really nice. NASDAQ's really good. Doing well today, too. We we need to go trade some real money. All right, I'm going to go trade some real money. See you guys later. I'm not going to ask you to like this one. Probably get no thumbs up because I screwed up so bad. So I'll try to be better tomorrow. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. We'll see you tomorrow.